Sup, powerful nonsenses. How's it going? Sup, that's right. Sup, brothers. Sup, and this sisters, week. and sisters. And sisters. And brothers sisters. and sisters out there. Siblings. Sup, powerful nonsense, sibs. Mm. Mm, maybe not. Um, we won't keep that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to another episode. Episode 116. Yes. Mate, getting on a bit. I know. Getting on Doing a bit. Doing cranking them out. Cranking them Keeping out. Keeping your ears entertained. Yeah. Whatever you're doing, tweet us, tell us. Are you on a train? Are you on a bus? Oh, yeah. Are you running? Are you running? Are you not running? Are you sitting? <laughs> Are you sitting? On a sofa, <laughs> eating cake. <laughs> we want to know. And if you are, what cake? Because I want some. Yes. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Weird way to start an episode. But yes, let us know. Let us know how you're listening to us. We'd love to know. Um. So, something really exciting happened, like, weeks ago now. Week. Like, months ago But now, we forgot though. about but it. But we forgot to tell you about it. But it's really cool. We are part of a world record-breaking thing. Yes. Can you guess what? Can you guess what? Which no, it it's not the amount of cake one man has eaten in one day. <laughs> I'm not responsible for that. Uh, no, it's not who can go from eating the most meat ever to turning vegan. Jem's not involved in that. No, no, no. And it's not the podcast with the most bullshit introductions <laughs> ever. <laughs> uh, no, in fact, we were a part of the longest podcast ever. in history. Yes. Organised by the amazing Mike Russell. What a brave man. He hosted the whole thing. Was it 36 hours? For 36 straight? hours straight. We do 30 minutes and we are like... Already I, hate, hating each other. I have no idea how he did it. Apparently, there's a video out there of him like hitting the wall. Like, what did he literally like, fall over after? Well, like, well, I think he's kind of starting to like. He did look like he'd been in the round. Like, he looks like he was just against ropes even when we spoke to him. And I think <laughs> yeah. we were like at the halfway mark, weren't we? Uh, we were the first twenty. We were, I think, we were probably about eighteen hours into the thirty-six hour. Oh yeah, I'd probably say something like that. But hardcore. I mean, it was hardcore and it is available apparently. It so Jen was telling me. We will link up to it. It'll probably be just at the bottom yeah. somewhere. But it's organised. His company is UK Podcasters, I think. Yes. So if you search for that, probably world record breaking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but 36 hours worth of podcast. I don't even know how far into it we are. Mm-mm. So you're going to have to listen to the whole thing. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do think it, it might be split up as well. But I do think oh, if right. you're feeling hardcore and you've got some serious time to kill. Yeah. Then you could go thirty six hours. Yeah. But do sleep and eat in between because yes. it could mess you up. <laughs> yeah. As Mike felt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we should probably get him on to talk about that. We should maybe. maybe. Anyway, but he'll also be there at New Media Europe that we're gonna be at. Yeah. Next month, this month. Next Wait, month. Wait, this month, technically this by month. the time this episode goes out, right? Yes, this month. This June. month, June eighteenth, nineteenth. Yes, that's right. So he'll be there because he's he's organizing that as well. So so we are world Shout record out to breakers. Mike Russell. Are we going to put that on the website? World, world record, record breakers. breakers. Well, I don't, I'm not sure we can really stake the claim as the world record breakers because we were only on there for an hour. True. But we were part of a world record breaker. We do our own. Well, let's go 36 hours and one minute <laughs> and just knock Mike off his podium. Yeah, let's put, the, let's put the poll out there. Could you deal with 36 hours and one minute? The question is, can I deal with 36 hours and one minute of you? <laughs> 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 I couldn't deal with 36 no, hours and one minute and me. I sleep in between. <laughs> I get fed up of my own yeah, company. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so yeah, check that out. We'll link it up in the show notes, powerfulmonsters.com forward slash 116. Yes. Boom. Anyway, so, so uh, for those that have been following us for a long time, you will know that we have an ebook out there. We do. How to find time. For your written, by, um, written by yours Wayne truly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Yeah, it's damn right. It's surprising that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even a writer. <laughs> but it turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, and it's available for free. Go to powerfulnonsense.com. And it's called How to Make Time for Your Side Hustle. Correct. Which kind of means just make time so that you actually do the thing you want to be doing. Ultimately, but that title yeah. was a little bit longer. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you can download it for free, powerfulnonsense.com. It's on the homepage. Click the button, type in your email address. Ping. We'll ping it straight to you. However, sometimes you might want to just listen to this. because Consider this almost the, the audio book. This is like the off-the-cuff audio book. Off-the-cuff, where we're yeah. Like, so we've not got the book in front of us reading it. We could actually get you to do that. We probably should get me to do that. Yeah, actually. we'll sort that out. Yeah. Mm. But 
So this is like your your episode version of it. We're riffing on the book. Uh huh. So this is like your on the go version. But if you want to download it, like rather than show notes, you can just get the book. Mm-hmm. Right. Anyway, so the whole point of this ebook slash episode is that like. If you're just starting out and you're trying to get a business off the ground, like who does you still got your day job? You might even have a family that you need to take care of, a girlfriend that you need to spend time with and whatever. And it can be a real challenge to juggle the time to do all of it. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what we want to help you to get around. Free up some time. Free up some time. Get shit done. Because mm-hmm. the thing is, right? Yes. I always like look at like the president or like people owning like these big companies. And I'm like, but they always seem to be doing these crazy things as well. And they seem to have all the time in the world. Like, how on earth do they have the time? Because they have exactly the same amount of time as everyone else. We all have 24 hours in one day. Unless you do that meditation. I heard about meditation that helps you to slow down time. Yeah, but you still have 24 hours in one day. (laughs) True, it's just that minute feels a lot longer. Yeah, I suppose time is relative, right? Yes, exactly. Right. Let's not yeah, go quantum there. physics, Let's right? Not go there. <laughs> um, no way. Oh, yes way. You better get that. Shocking! Another doorbell. Two episodes in a row. Doorbells disrupting us. I know. It's annoying. Never it's mind. really annoying. Anyway, Wayne's doorbell causing problems. Havoc. Havoc. <laughs> Destroying the podcast. Never mind. So. Yes. The point I was saying, right? All these big people seem to have all this time, right? Mm-hmm. Well, no, not that they have this time, but they always manage to get shit done and have an awesome life. So there's got to be something they're doing right. Yes. Okay. And I genuinely think it's all just about time management. I think they've read the ebook, Wayne. I think they've read <laughs> <laughs> President Obama, you're fucking welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so... Yeah, so, so we, let's break it down. Yes, let's start, because I know there's some seriously down. good chapters in there. I was actually rereading it, mm-hmm. the notes on this episode, as we, I knew he was going to do the podcast, and I actually was like, you know what? This is good stuff. So I think we should go one by one through the chapters. So. Let's go. Let's, let's do go. It. What are we starting with? Okay, so the first thing you need to think about is intention. Yes. Right? Because if you're not going to be intentional about making this time, Right? You're yeah, not yeah. going to make time. It's like people say, I'm going to start making time for the gym. But they're like, you know what? I don't really care about my health. And so... It's kind of like... Yeah. <laughs> I will I will work out I'll find tomorrow. that time, yeah. Tomorrow Think... I will work out and then like before nine o'clock and then eight o'clock comes, I'm still in bed. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the intention kind of links again to the whole why thing we spoke about a right. lot. It's kind of like, do you want this enough that you're actually going to put in the effort to make the time? Right. Is it appealing? Have you sold it to yourself? Or are you kind of like, it would be nice to have a business or it'd be nice to start going to the gym. Uh-huh. But you know what? It's actually easier not to and I don't care about it that much to actually start. So I right. think that's the big thing about intention. Really. Exactly. Exactly. And also, like, um, there's this, uh, is it Parkinson's Law? I think it's Parkinson's yes. Law. Yes. So many different laws. It's not Murphy's Law, I know that. It might be Parkinson's Law. Which is the idea that Anything will take, any task will take the amount of time that you assign to it. It's not Parkinson's law, but yeah, it's one of Which the laws. Which one's Parkinson's law? Don't, I don't know, that might be like things of The technology one? Yes, that's a technology one. Ah, uh, what is it then? Don't worry. It's someone's law. Someone's law. Uh, which is basically that, yeah, whatever time you assign to something will be the amount of time that it takes, right? Mm-hmm. Which I have found to be mostly true. Yes. Um, and so if you're kind of being like, oh, you know, I'll... When I find time, you'll never find time because you've kind of given it this infinite amount of time to get it done. You've already set the excuse, so you're definitely right. not going right. to do it. And up to this point in your life, you haven't started. So why do you think now you're going to... Exactly. And everybody every year is like, we're getting busier and busier. So Exactly. Whereas if you kind of say to yourself, right, I'm going to find some time every single day to put into this side business that I'm building or every week or every month. It doesn't have to be every day or every mm-hmm. week. It's as much time as you want, to, you think you need to put in. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the thing. It's all about as much time as you feel you need to put in. Yeah. Just set that intention, write it down, put it in your diary. Today I must find two hours to put into this side business. Yeah, and I think if people kind of reverse engineer their current days anyway, if you kind of do the whole, I know the next point we can talk about is like the ideal work week, but I think if you currently Spoilers. like... 
<laughs> <laughs> if you actually put in like what your current, like if you wrote down what your current day looks like, I think you'll actually find things in there where you actually think, wow, right. I killed off two hours uh-huh. just on Facebook. on Facebook or on checking mm-hmm. my updates on my phone or I watched two episodes of an hour long series mm-hmm. and you're like, oh wow, I could actually just trim that up and then I've got two hours mm-hmm. to work on a business. So I think actually maybe reverse engineering what you're already doing and uh-huh. maybe seeing how you're spending that time yeah. really. And one thing I found as well is like, see if you can like smush things together. Like multitasking isn't a thing, <laughs> but like, I don't want to be vulgar or anything, but no, what are you going to say? Oh, I know what you're going to say, but you got your phone, right? You're sitting on the bug. He's sitting on the toilet. That's a perfect time to answer some emails, yeah, right? Yeah. Or the or the trains. It's kind of making use of. <laughs> yeah, the I probably time. should have gone with the train rather than but, the toilet. But I know you. But if you get any tweets from Pals and Nonsense, <laughs> it means Wayne is on the shitter, which means <laughs> if you see a tweet go out, reply back to it, and you can be pretty much guaranteed that Wayne, <laughs> Wayne is on the final <laughs> push. <laughs> <laughs> basically uh, but like I know as an mean. example yes. like there are little things like that that you can do just to kind of actually are you saying are you gonna say like we're gonna do productivity poop hacks <laughs> 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 not hacking the pooping hacking your pro- <laughs> <laughs> productive pooping exactly but that's gonna be a blog that's post an ebook, yes. right? oh, let's, let's get that out yeah. there Productive pooping. Amazing. Anyway. Um, but yeah, so just be intentional. Oh my God, this episode is like flying away with us. I know. All okay. right, let's get out of this So one. yeah, perfectly simple. Just set the intention, make it solid, stick to it. Okay. Talking about the poo or the... Mate. <laughs> <laughs> the, obviously the intention. Yes. Not the poop. Next one. So the next one, and this is one I stole from Michael Hyatt. Yes. I have absolutely stolen it from Michael Hyatt, but do you know what? It is one of the best things I've ever done. Mm-hmm. And do you know what? I could probably do doing it again sometime soon, actually, because I'm kind of losing my way a little bit. Mm-hmm. But create your ideal work week, right? Sit down and timetable, like like your school timetable used to be. Oh, which, yeah. do you know what? I do kind of miss my old school Get your timetable. highlighters out. <laughs> I really do miss it. Just so I knew, because I knew where I was going to be every time, every day, knew what I was going to be doing. I've kind of got myself But people have got that on their calendars now on their phones. Right. So if you do it right, I guess uh-huh. you can... Which is what this kind of ideal work week is. That, and, and it's the ideal work week. So it's, it's if you had 100% control of your time from Monday morning to Sunday night, like, how would you spend your time? Like, a what would you do? Bit of a dangerous sort of uh, thing to say. People are like, Netflix, <laughs> your girlfriend. Yeah, but, but <laughs> if, if that is... Well, don't forget, this is the ideal work week. Oh, yeah. That so this is well. more about the timetabling of the... We'll talk about the other play, stuff, yeah. but this is more about timetabling, how you're going to spend your time in your work. Mm-hmm. Um, so just timetable out everything that you're going to... If it's nothing to do with work, if it's just about pleasure, yes, then just... We'll come to that in a minute, but yeah. just block out, block it out in What great. you kind of want to get done in the week right. on a regular basis. So if... Your... But, and also, they, uh, Michael Hyatt recommends breaking it down into themes. Mm. So you have certain chunks of time in the day, which is like... For him, I think it's like from like five till seven is mm-hmm. his like me time, yeah. which is all about like reading a uh, inspirational book, it's meditation, meditation, that sort of exercise. stuff. Uh, and then he's got his bits of which about right. This is the time I answer sort of emails and correspondence and stuff. And then uh, maybe Tuesday is like this is content day, so this is the day I produce all the content for my business. Wednesday is meetings day, for example. And the good thing is, I guess, as well, you kind of know yourself. You know when you feel most energetic. Maybe it's the first hours in the morning or in the evening. So right. I guess it's good that you can plot in where you know you're more likely to do the thing that you're hoping to set out to do. Right, <laughs> exactly. Um, I think I linked in the book, in the ebook, did, to, you his, you to his his template that he uses, which is just a spreadsheet template. Really, really good to check out. And it is literally just, again, if you had 100% control, over how you spent your time. And bearing in mind, you will not be able to stick to this week every mm-hmm. week, but it's a good starting point. And also, he recommends sharing it out with colleagues and family members just to go, this is what my work schedule is. I'm going to try and make my work schedule look like this, so can we please, if you're booking any meetings for me, can you tr- please try and stick it into yeah. these blocks of time here? And I guess it does fit around people who maybe are watching and are in that nine to five. At least you know mm-hmm. you can block out, I know I'm in the office from this time uh-huh. to this time, I'm travelling this time to this time, which means I've got those evening hours to uh-huh. kind of kick in some work on the actual business really right. yeah so yeah that so, as well. and i think as well if you check out that blog post i think it literally yeah michael hyatt really sums it up tells you exactly how to do well, it and yeah. it's, a, it's a great graph i know yeah. i've filled it out as well so oh have you i have but it's very I hard told to, me you didn't, 
I have actually, but then it's again, it's one of those things. It's one of those ongoing things. It changes. Yeah, it Sometimes is a living you stick to it. document. Yeah, I think it's good to kind of maybe revise it every six and months. And it's your ideal work week. It doesn't mean that yeah. it happens all the time. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, don't don't feel you have to be super rigid with it because sometimes it's just not possible. But mm-hmm. at least again, it goes back to intention. At least that's the intentional work week. If if you could decide everything, every minute of how you spend your day, that's what you'd want it to look like. And just bear that in mind. So we're halfway through. My goodness. We did have a long intro. We did have a long intro. Yeah, we did. And also there was an interruption from someone picking up a package. Disgraceful. Don't mm-hmm. they know? Mm-hmm. Don't they know what's going on in this room right now? The uh, the studio of Powerful Nonsense. We need to put a Chateau sign on the front Wayne. Door. <laughs> in yeah. in Powerful Nonsense HQ. They don't know. Gotta they don't them. know. We've got to tell off our security guard for letting them through. <laughs> <laughs> in the little garden gnome. <laughs> <laughs> Just with his middle finger up. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, on that note, uh, we'll be back in like two ticks. Two ticks. Right, guys, we need to take a moment. Thank our sponsor. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're done. <laughs> uh, no, University of Northampton. My God. This show would not be happening right now if it wasn't for them, I don't think. Certainly not to this level. Not to this high quality quality level. So huge thank you to (laughs) University of Northampton, our old uni. Exactly. So they taught us the ways. (laughs) They taught us the ways of the force. Um, But yeah, no, honestly, like the thing that I think we love about Northampton Uni over other unis, apart from the fact that we went there, (laughs) right? Is the fact with our limited experience of other universes. With our limited, but no, but I mean, I know, from, I from know. my perspective, Go. wait, let me finish, let me finish. Zip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the University of Northampton is like, it's about their their whole kind of thing is about social enterprise. So it's not just about going there and getting a degree and leaving and hopefully getting a job. It's about going there, getting your degree, but also learning how to set up not just a business but a social business. So it's a business that's out there to make good, positive social impact and make good social change. And the university has won so many awards for it, It so much recognition in the social enterprise space. Governments are always talking to them and stuff about how they can improve their social enterprise strategy. Honestly, if you're into social enterprise, if you're into possibly setting up a business, these guys are the uni to check out. So if you want to check them out, northampton.ac.uk, check them out. Huge thank you to them for supporting the show. So, guys, we want to talk to you about New Media Europe. NMEU. NMEU. <laughs> Hashtag. Hashtag NMEU. I love that. Uh, we are so excited for this event. Like, honestly, I don't think we ever thought we would be at New Media Expo. No. But we're going to be. Yes, we are. We're going to be. We're not just going to be there. As guests, <laughs> we're going to be there as guests. We're going to be on a panel yeah, on about a, freelancing. Yeah, freelancing. And we're going to be hosting the new Media Europe Awards. What's going to happen if we actually win an award? <gasps> Who knows? We will have to. I, you will, I will give you the award and then you can pass it, it back, back over to, to me. That's and the then one. we'll do it. That's how it we'll works. We'll figure it out. But yeah, so we're hosting awards. Never thought that was going to happen. No, never thought well, I was going to be a host, so you're going to have to give me some tips. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put you into the, the training boot camp. Cool. Uh, but we're going to be there. So, uh, tickets are selling quite quick. Very quick, Very actually. quick. I mean, some, like, are, some levels are sold out. Some levels are sold out completely. In fact, I believe there's only one type of ticket left. And I think there's only 100 of those type of tickets left. So you got to get on it, right? But if you want those tickets, just have a look. Go to powerfulnonsense.com forward slash NMEU. Check it out. What is NMEU, Wayne? <laughs> you know what, the New Media Expo? Yeah, what is it? Oh, we, we didn't did really... this last time. Did people know New Media Expo? Oh, Maybe just a little assume. bit. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, the New Media Expo is like, it's like a conference type, convention type thing for all those people producing new media. So, podcasts, YouTubers, uh, short videos, short films, documentaries, all that sort of stuff. So, anything to do with like, essentially, content. online digital content. That's what it's all about. It's a big get together. It's happening in London uh, next month, mid June. Um, it's happening. We're going to be there. It's going to be awesome. Dan Miller's going to be there from Forty Eight Days. Uh, he's like many other specialists in there. Yes, many, many, many specialists, including many us. different things. There's going to be workshops <laughs> about 
how you can set up your new media businesses and things like that. So much good stuff. Honestly, it's going to be great. It's all on the website to see. To be all on the websites, yeah. Powerfulnonsense.com forward slash NMEU. That's our link will take you straight to all of the breakdown of what you can expect and a little button to register and buy your tickets. Cool. Check it out. Huzzah. We're back. We're back. We're back. We are back. Uh, so we're kind of talking through the ebook, how to find time for your side hustle. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've covered intention and the ideal work week. What's next? Next up, and this is like, I cannot, I tout about this on Twitter so much. I cannot emphasise this enough. Go on in. You have to, have to, have to, have to. Find a bit of tenderness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's got to, isn't it? It's got to find a bit of tenderness. I don't know what you're doing. I don't about. even know where that's from. What's that from? I don't know. Anyway, uh, you have to schedule in your downtime. Yes. You just have to do it. Like, it is so easy, particularly when you've got a day job and you've got your side hustle as well. It's so easy just to get lost in both and then you just burn the hell out. Plus you have no life. And you have no life, right? <laughs> Which then leads to burnout. We did a whole episode on burnout. We should probably link to that. Yes, we will. Um, Thing is, as well, with this point, I do think that when people are thinking about starting a business around the um, day job as well, I think you're really excited because you're uh-huh. thinking, yes. I'm going to start yeah. working on that thing I want to. And the quicker I do it, the more that's going to mm-hmm. get achieved. It means I can leave my job faster. And I think then you try to be the hero and uh-huh. actually block in, all right, every evening I'm going to be doing four hours on right. the business. And then after two or three weeks, you're literally like, I'm going to die if I do not sleep, right. which we're going to talk about a bit later. But also you're going to lose your friends. You're going to kind yeah. of, everyone around you is going to be like, wow, he's kind of like disappeared. And mm-hmm. then suddenly that's it. You're going to go to pot. So uh-huh. I do think the downtime is like a, Definitely. it's kind of like the me time. It's kind of taking definitely. time out for yourself, for your own uh-huh. um, mental hygiene even. Yeah, definitely. And, I, you know, there's a lot of talk at the moment around like hustle and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk being the big kind of talker about hustle and about putting in the 18 hour days and things like that. But do you know what? Like one thing he doesn't talk about very often, but he does it as well, is he completely schedules in his downtime. Yeah. Saturday and Sunday, he is out. Yeah. He is checked out. Fam- that is family time. Family, goes to games. Goes to games. Like, he stops working entirely. Mm. Unless there's some content that's gone out and he might just tweet about it. And obviously, mm. he's on Snapchat and whatever doing his thing. But he's not at meetings. He's not at the the day job. He's not working. He is with his family. He's scheduled it in. It's solid in his schedule. He makes sure Saturday and Sunday he is out. And I think people underestimate how much that down downtime actually so kind of different. ignites you for when you get back into the work. Because I think, if anything, that time away from the work, you kind of build up that excitement again where you actually uh-huh. like, you know, I'm actually excited to get home and start right. working on it because suddenly ideas are coming through and uh-huh. so you really want to get back into it. So yeah, definitely. don't see it as a way that, oh, actually, I can get there faster. See it as actually it's just going to keep me excited, keep uh-huh. me healthy, keep me energetic. Yeah. So yeah, just make sure. And again... It's like with that intention thing, just make sure it's solid in the diary, write it down, this is downtime. Go and organise stuff with your friends, organise stuff with your family, whatever, but schedule it in and make it rigid, because if you don't make it rigid, it won't happen, Mm -hmm. guaranteed. Definitely. Because you'll be like, oh, I've got that, got the thing that I can design for my business, so then you'll get sucked into that, and then you'll be like, oh, I haven't had a weekend off. Yeah. So just schedule it. Cool. Um... Next thing, super important, super important. And in fact, I've actually slipped out of this habit recently. I need to get back into it. I've actually been getting doing this quite consistently recently, Have actually. You? Yeah. Oh, we'll talk about that in a second. It's about mastering your mornings. Mm-hmm. The morning is so important. And this is coming from a non-morning person as well. I am not in any way. Jem can testify to this. Yeah. I am not a morning person. You're a miserable kid. But... Again, if you, yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, if you, if I get out the wrong side of the bed, Jem knows. I just tuck him back in and hope he comes out again <laughs> after. Be like, I'll come back and podcast. Not that we sleep hour. together. No, else. yeah, like, <laughs> can't do. We're not that close. Keep... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's, it's team bonding. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, you've rocked up at like nine o'clock in the morning and ready to podcast. You're like morning, and I'm like, I hate you. <laughs> not today. Um. But if you, again, it goes back to the intention. If you set your morning up right, you set yourself up for such a productive day. Yeah. Even if just for a few more hours, yeah, maybe yeah. not even the whole day. Like, um, meditation's good. 
definitely recommend meditation. I like the one you put in there. You put the contrast showers, which is something I'm oh, a massive fan of. I haven't done that in ages. Yeah, oh, I love it. I think in the morning, I don't know if you've heard, if I mentioned Wim Hof on the episode before, Wim Hof mm-hmm. is a great guy to look at. He does a great breathing technique. I do that breathing technique first, and then I go have a freezing cold shower. Mm-hmm. So I don't actually go warm. I just go hardcore straight into the cold. This guy. And literally, I'm not. I'm not joking. That starts your morning. You feel like you know refreshed. What? You've washed off you're the night. You're so energized. You're like, okay, let's do this today. And yeah. I do like a few stretches here uh-huh. and there. Maybe I'm more of a meditator at nighttime, but some people like it in the morning. It yeah, clears I their like brain. it in the morning. It clears my brain. I think because I'm not a morning person. Mm. I think you are a morning person. Yeah, I'd say so. Because uh, I'm not a morning person, I need the meditation just to kind of go, okay, mm-hmm. deal with all of that angst and stuff because you've had to get out of bed <laughs> before <laughs> nine o'clock. Yeah. Just get rid of that. Just serene. The music breathe. calms you down. You see, I don't listen to music when I meditate. I use Headspace. Oh, uh, does it not have like that sort of? No, it's nice just it's just what's his face from Headspace bells. just talking. Oh, okay. And then sometimes you forget that he's talking because he's been quiet for so long, and then he'll start talking. And you're like, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> it freaks yeah. you out a little bit sometimes. But yeah, Headspace I recommend for uh, guided meditation. The thing is, why I think ten minutes. Ten, ten minutes all you need. Yes, headspace, we'll link it up. Mm-hmm. But another reason why I think the morning's so important, I think because most people feel like you wake up and bam, you're into the day. Yeah. And I think by getting up that whole, I think um, there's a great book, Miracle Morning, mm-hmm. How Elrod, which everybody pipes mm-hmm. on about, is a great book. Yeah. And it kind of breaks down those morning routines. But I think most people get up and it's kind of like, go from the off. Like, yeah. you're okay, I've got to have my breakfast before I need to leave. Get on the, get hit that train that I always get and so uh-huh. on. Whereas I think when people are in control of their day, then you can then go into your ideal work right. day you know what you've got to get done. We've talked about it in the past. Make sure you know what you're doing the day before, which is where the ideal work day comes in. Mm-hmm. And I think you just are, you go into your day calm where most people are just yeah. rushing into the day, get it out of the way. And I think actually yeah. the more composed you can be starting the day, mm-hmm. the more control you have over it. And then that's it. You'll just get a lot more mm-hmm. done. A quick breakdown, because we've done morning rituals before. We've done an episode on that, I'm pretty sure. Yes. But a very quick breakdown of mine at the moment as it stands. Well, what it should be, because I haven't actually done this properly for a while. I've been out of sync. I've been away doing a show, and I'm trying to get back into it. Excuses. <coughs> uh, yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> so I get up. I have a cup of tea. It's the first order of business. A bit of water after the cup of tea, because this is a weird thing to do, uh, but I do. Very British. <laughs> <laughs> um, then I meditate. Mm-hmm. Then I read for about 10 minutes something good. At the moment, it's How to Win Friends and Influence People. Just for 10 minutes. Just get that into the system. Uh, and then I have a contrast shower. And then I'm ready to go. And when was the last time you actually did that routine, Wayne? Be honest. The last time I did that routine would be before the show. And then and then, when I, then I was doing the show because I wasn't even in my own house for like a yeah. month, pretty much. That completely knocked me out. So but I'm doing that, it just it. gives you so like much energy going into your day. And I think up, as well, it's that idea that you get the early wins on a day. It feels like you've done something productive yeah. for the day. But they're on my to-do list as well. So I'm like, tick, 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 yeah, yeah. three things off. Boom. Yeah. Ready to go. Morning routines. We've heard about it a lot. And I know yeah. loads of podcasts speak about this. It's like one of the questions they always ask every yeah. single guest. But it is really important. Yeah. And if you look at most successful mm-hmm. people, their morning routine is pretty solid. Yeah. And, and do do your research because not every not my morning routine will probably not work for you. So you've got to kind of set up your own, but maybe use that as a template and tweak it as you go. Keep changing it. Mm-hmm. Change it up and see what works for you. I love a good contrast shower though. Definitely. Need to Great do that for more. the old lactic acid. Get that out of the system. Yeah. We just feel energized. Anyway. Cool. Next one. So then the next thing, right? So you've done your morning routine. You're like, boom, I'm ready to go. Buzzing. Uh, assuming that, of course, this is in the morning because it's a side hustle, but whenever you choose to do your work, right? You're like, boom, I'm ready to go, okay? I think it can be very easy to get overwhelmed with what you need to do, and particularly if you've got a limited space of time, let's say you've only put out an hour per day to get mm-hmm. your shit done because, you know, you've got your day you, job, yeah. that's all you got, that's all, you, and that's fine, that's totally fine. Uh, just sit down and put out, put onto your to-do list no more than three tasks, are there some sort of like research or stats on this or is that just... Do you know, I think it's just to do with the psychology of it. I think it's so it's not overwhelming. But mm-hmm. also, if you put down the three tasks that you need to do, you end up picking the ones that you need to do mm-hmm. rather than... I mean, obviously, if you're much more limited on time, you're probably going to go for the quicker ones than you are actually the ones that are necessarily more effective. So obviously, the more time you have, the better choices you're probably likely to make. But just pick three tasks... Three most important tasks, I'd say. Just pick those and just go through those. If you finish those before your hour or two hours or five hours or however much time you put aside is done, 
then if you're feeling up to it, by all means, look at the setting another three or however many. Mm-hmm. But the point is you've got through those three most important tasks, so you've pushed the needle forward. Um, don't just pick like the the really easy ones, like, I don't know, uh, post a Facebook post. Mm. That's not really going to get you very far. So pick the important ones, the ones that are going to push the needle forward. But uh, you get those done, and then if... You are feeling up to it. Go for, go for more, but don't feel pressured to have to do it because you've already fulfilled what your quota for the day. You've already gone, that's a successful day on my side hustle because I've done the three most important things mm-hmm. that I can do. Um, and I guess it's a bit of a task in itself to kind of, I know we say the most three most important things, and I know a lot of people probably at the beginning probably focus on the things that aren't important. I don't know uh-huh. if you have any sort of system in the book. I can't remember that kind of helps you to gauge, um, is this an important thing to do? Okay, or is that so, something that you kind of have to gauge yourself? Because uh, I know people probably use certain tasks as a kind of way of feeling like, yeah, I'm doing the right thing, but actually uh-huh. it's not doing okay. anything. Okay, really, really quickly. Yes. Um, and there's, this is actually not the most effective way, but for the sake of time, yeah. Um, I think this is really easy to explain. If I do the most effective, it's kind of another layer on top. It's a lot harder to explain. Uh-huh. Um, basically, the GTG, the getting things done kind of mindset, is basically you go do a grid... Uh, which is on the one side, it's urgent, not urgent, and then important versus not important. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you then end up with four categories, which is urgent and important, urgent and not important, not urgent and important, and not urgent and not important. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you... That then basically kind of puts a hierarchy of your tasks, which should go, if I remember rightly... Not urgent and important first. Mm-hmm. Then I think urgent and important second. Then, no, sorry, urgent, urgent and important, important first. first. Like... Then not urgent, not important. Sorry, let's start again. <laughs> urgent and important first. Yes. Not urgent and important second. Yes. Then, uh, then urgent and not important. <laughs> And then not urgent and not important. What I would try to do is actually pop this picture or this graph up somewhere. Yeah, that's hard. You really have to think about that. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. But but once you've got that, you can quickly see which tasks fit into the top three mm-hmm. to do. Well, obviously, they're probably likely to have more, but it's just an easy way of filtering through. Yeah, and I think I think as well. I like, think a lot of business people get mentors and stuff for this because that mentor. Because I think sometimes you can kind of be like, well, I feel it feels urgent, it feels important, uh-huh. which is where sometimes actually having someone else on the outside to actually say to you, no, this yeah. is your priority today, and that's yeah. what people pay yeah. a lot of time for business. But coaching. it's a good starting point to help yeah. decide. So and be honest with yourself because yeah, definitely be honest at the end of the day, you want to move your business forward. Uh-huh. So do the right things, even though some other things feel yeah. easier. Do the stuff that's actually going to move that needle forward. Definitely. So cool. we're running out, running out of time fast. Coming to the end. One more and thing. And now we're going to talk about the end of the day. See? It's like I planned it when I wrote the book. Yes. Should we go? What's, yeah. What is this point? So the final thing is just get a damn good night's sleep. Mm-hmm. Get just like, because particularly if you're not a morning person, particularly <laughs> if you're not a morning person, it will, again, set you up for such a a much more productive day if you wake up feeling refreshed because sometimes it'll be a case of like oh well like particularly if you've got kids or whatever you get home from work at six o'clock it's like oh well i've got to spend time with the kids before the kids go to bed or whatever um so sometimes it's more effective for you to get up early in the morning Mm -hmm. and get your time in there before you go out to work yeah um you know when everyone else is asleep so it's going to really help you to get a good night's sleep if that's the case so there are a few little hacks that you can do we've done a whole episode on this in fact i think we've done two episodes on sleep I've got a feeling we've done two. We've, the one that jumps out at me is the Go the Fuck to Sleep with Adam Stansbury episode. Yeah. I think we've just mentioned it a lot. I Maybe think it was have. part of like routines or some sort of episode. Uh-huh. But I think a big thing for me is sleep. I think I hear so many people saying like they struggle with sleep. We had a meeting mm-hmm. the other day and someone was saying they're struggling with sleep. Yeah. And I just think for me now, I've got sleep down. I don't care. Like I've made sleep map. <laughs> <laughs> because I do think there are set things you need to do Easy. each night. And we Easy. do go through them on the podcast. And I know in the it's ebook, in the ebook there's a few totally things break down I do there. in there. Yeah. And I just think, again, it goes back to that. It's kind of like, if you, if you have a good night's sleep, like you say, you wake up feeling refreshed, you go into the day feeling energised, and I think that the worst thing is to kind of feel like you haven't recovered yeah. and then have to go and smash that next day, yeah, huh. feeling like on the edge, like you say, if you haven't slept well, you're going to be grumpy, you're mm-hmm. going to be 
miserable to be around and so i do think it's a natural thing that we all need it's not the thing that you should cut it, yeah in your a lot of people are like oh, i need more time so yeah. i'm gonna have less sleep and it's kind of you get like the 5 a.m club it's like okay that's fine to wake up at 5 a.m but make sure you are still getting your eight hours before <laughs> yeah. that 5 it's fine waking up at 5 a.m but if you don't go to bed till 1 a.m it's not really gonna help you yeah it's not very sustainable <laughs> so yeah i mean there's there's much more information about that in in it's like links to like biohacks i think I think yeah. there are links in there. I definitely talk about a few yeah. biohacks that you can use. Um, so it's all in there because uh, we're running short on time. Yes. But if you download the ebook, powerfulnonsense.com, on the homepage, click download, s- put your email in, and we will send it across. So do you want to just quickly summarize each of the points so, yes. and then tell them how they can get the book? Again. Good idea. So cool. point number one be intentional. Decide how much time you're going to put in and commit to it. Simple. Then. Work out what your ideal work week is. Draw that out on a nice timetable, spreadsheet, however you want to do it. But again, make sure it's written down somewhere so you can refer back to it. If you had 100% control of the time that you have in your week, how would you spend it on your work? Then make sure you schedule in as well your downtime. Because if you don't schedule in your downtime, I can guarantee you it won't always happen. And it's so important and you will end up with burnout. Then master those mornings, getting a good morning ritual to really set up your day. Honestly, it will make you so much more productive. It might sound like it shouldn't, like just jumping in a shower, a cold shower and come in. But try it. Just try it and tell me it doesn't work. (laughs) Because I promise you, you'll come out being like, yes, I am ready to go. Even if only for five minutes. Even if you're a bit nippy after. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So yeah, master your mornings. Uh, then also build momentum around three tasks at a time, the three most important tasks to get done. Just commit to doing those and you will see the needle move pretty damn quick if you're picking the right tasks, of course. Yes. Um, and then finally, make sure you're getting a damn good night. Sleep. Sleep is a must. Sleep is a must. And there is a TED Talk, actually. If you don't believe us, there is a <laughs> TED Talk. We will link to it yeah. about like this changed how I think about sleep so much. Then there's a TED talk. I think it's why do we sleep again? We'll link that up Mm -hmm. as well. Watch that and then commit to your sleep. Uh, So if again, it's all in the ebook in more detail. Uh, So if you want the ebook, head to powerful, without our rambling, without our rambling, (laughs) head to powerfulnonsense.com. It's on the homepage. There's a nice big button download. Now I think it says Mm -hmm. click on that, type in your email address and we'll ping it straight across to you. And there's loads of good techniques that we haven't kind of spoke about mm-hmm. in now. You've got like the Pomodoro method. You've got some yep. 80 20 rule stuff. So, yeah, there's some. There's a, a, the book is a lot more actionable because we've just kind of tried to cover everything just to kind of give you a general idea just. as to how you can make more time for your side hustle. See what I did there. Um, so, cool. that's, yeah. that's our episode, guys. So, thanks very much for tuning in. As always, please, if you're listening on the podcast and you're enjoying what we're saying, because there are a lot of you listening haven't left a review yet we need them reviews we know the numbers we know the numbers there are a lot of you not leaving reviews so please please it will make all the difference for us head on over to itunes pop in that review five stars or more thank you and uh, also if you're watching on youtube hit that subscribe button hit subscribe hit the thumbs up and we will love you forever awesome thanks very much for tuning in guys we will catch you next time see you later